Oh, God. Without hitting the record button. Can you believe oh, that? Wow. So, for those of you who are listening today, we're going to be talking about all those wonderful tools that I talk about, or those wonderful cells, or um, when something happens, past in, your, in life that you haven't dealt with, how it stores in your body. Well, we're really going to talk about that. We're going to really dissect it with Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader. And so, if you have any questions today, you can ask the doctor during the break. And we are going to be live on the air pretty soon. Okay, so there we go. So I guess we are live, huh? So I can yes. hear it there. And so I'm going to share it too. So um, all you have to do is you share it, tell all your friends to do so. I'm going to share it in a group. Let me see. Oh, look, this. I can do this. Look and do this. Wow. Let me see. Wow, I could do that. Okay, so hopefully I'm sharing out there. So if you are watching, if you're listening, let me know. Give us some love. Give us some hearts. Give us some likes. There we go. And uh, let us know, Andre, when we are ready to go. I can hear the music. Oh, here we go. So it is time to dance. Here we go. You hear the music? Time to dance. There we go. <laughs> and did you share on your page? I, I'm looking on the, here, I needed to there do that. The Lillian here we go. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Welcome back to, oh, listen to me. I'm saying welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show because we are live on Facebook and I'm already thinking that I started the show. So hello, my listening friends. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who have been tuning in for the last seven years or you just stumbled upon the show yesterday, welcome back. But if this is the first time you have tuned in, it is no accident. It is purposeful. And for the reason that you tuned in today, because I've been waiting for you, the show is now in a place where you can go to when you need a friend. This is a place that we all are able to have a conversation that will help us heal from the inside out. And so for those of you who are, don't know about the show, I am committed, is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission and my vision to provide alternative ways to heal, and it's my mission to uh, make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life, and I hope you, my listening, as well as my viewing friends, because we are live on Facebook and we are live on YouTube. Well, it'll, it'll eventually be on YouTube. We're on the radio at, at this time, and so... What I want you to do is to know that the choices that you make by dealing with the things that you don't want to deal with will change not only your life, but it will help you have the life of your dreams. And so today, I want you guys to write this number down. And as a matter of fact, if you're seeing us on Facebook Live, I've got the number right here. I don't know if you can see it really well, but it's 407 407- Three seven three five nine five nine, or you can write a message on the uh, comment section on Facebook Live if you have any questions for today. You have heard me talk about, you know, when we are um, have issues that we haven't dealt with, that when we have um, past issues from our ancestries, that it can be handed down to us, and that if we don't deal with either that trauma or that perception that makes you feel like you've been wronged or something is wrong with you, if you don't deal with it, then what happens is it goes into your body. And I've said this before, then it manifests. Well, just recently, I had gone to the ACIM conference and I heard a lecture on very similar what we talk about, but this is called recall healing. Have you heard of recall healing? healing. So recall healing helps us discover the root cause of disease. And interestingly enough, this root cause could be handed down from generation to generation. Well, we are very fortunate today because Michelle, Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader, PhD, 
has been trained by Dr. Uh, it's a German, it's a German new medicine, neuro emotional technique, neuro linguistic programming, hypnosis, coaching, and imagery for health. When she discovered recall healing, it kind of changed her life. Now, she's got a lot of healing modalities, but this one kind of like rose to the surface. And so today, for those of you who are feeling that you have a diagnosis or illness, today's show could potentially, if you're curious about what we're talking about, could potentially lead you to the root cause. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful that Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader, PhD, is here to do just that. Welcome, Michelle, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here with you and excited that there are people like you that are committed to doing what you're doing. And it's just wonderful. Well, thank you. People like me are committed to do what I'm doing because there's people like you that are willing to go beyond your education and say, this just doesn't work. I want more to help heal, be a vessel to help heal my clients, my patients. So share a little bit about your background and what led you to this modality. Sure. Uh, I guess it started maybe in the 90s in a bigger way uh, to, I, I had a dream that I was going to be a PhD in psychology. I actually didn't know how I was going to get there because my grades were actually mediocre in high school. But along the way, several things sort of came into play and, um, and my aunt had a breast cancer. And so when I went back to get a degree in psychology, uh, I, I noticed that that there it was a lot of theory and the theory was amazing and great and yet i had experience of many people telling me that they had been through counseling and and traditional therapy and it just didn't work um, in a big way and so when my aunt had a breast cancer my cousin was on a search for holistic and alternative and integrative practices and that's how he came to uh, it was total biology, German new medicine first, and then met Dr. Gilbert Renaud, and he came to San Diego. And once I took a, a course with Dr. Gilbert, it was that was it. I knew that I would then be writing my 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 thesis for my master's in psychology on that, mm -hmm. and um, and so it was great. And so this is a long journey that I, I called you this morning a self-cleaning oven. As a life coach, I'm supposed to be a self-cleaning oven. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to teach us how to also be self-cleaning ovens when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay. So we're having an issue, a technical issue. Um, for some reason, um, let's see. We have the station sending signals that are private. Um, um, Andre, can you make sure that you are not private? <coughs> Let me see if I can uh, allow. Let me see. Yes, give me a second. Okay. I, I changed it earlier, so you weren't seeing the stations. Uh, so for those of you who are watching us on Facebook, because usually when we're not on Facebook, we're making these adjustments, but you are actually watching a radio show that's on the air in Jacksonville at eight o'clock in the morning. Now, did you see that? Did you see the message from the station? I did. Okay, perfect. So now you'll get to see the messages from the station. So for those of you who are watching, there you go. For those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, this is going to be very foreign to you. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the people who are following um, this this kind of modality, this healing modality that I've talked about on the show. Actually, um, I had mentioned this to you the last time I saw you, that if you've heard of Dr. Mona Lisa Schultz. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Dr. Mona Lisa Schultz does this kind of, it, she has a, uh, she's a medical intuitive and yeah. she uses, she's a PhD, MD, PhD, and she uses this technique to help her patients. As a matter of fact, Dr. Oz uses her when he mm -hmm. can't figure out what's wrong with his patients. Awesome. Yes. So it's catching on. It's mm -hmm. catching on. So when we go back on to the air, I want us to all learn about what is it? What is recall healing? Uh, because it's so important that we understand the concept before, because this is like dipping our toe, Michelle, mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Dipping, dipping our toe into this because it is so foreign. It really is a foreign thing that our body is speaking to us, but we ignore it. Mm-hmm. And how does it speak to us? And, and, and how do we know that what I have today, this condition isn't handed down from my parents or my parents' parents? And what are the, what's the parameters by which you dig deeper? So those are kind of like all we're going to be talking about today. And we're back. We're about to go back on the air. Here we go. Time to dance. <laughs> Here we go. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407. 407- Three seven three five nine five nine. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow together. Today's teacher is Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader. Now, I met her at a conference just recently at the ACIM conference that Dr. Lee Cowden runs. I'm just so excited whenever I meet someone that is beyond like-minded. And so they've gone through the work. And uh, I've talked here on the show uh, about how so many different things are held in our body and our body wants to be in alignment with our brain. But there are a lot of things that we don't know. We don't know. And this is one. So let's talk. To, uh, so we have Dr. Lamasa Schrader. And if you have any questions, you can call or text at 407-373-5959, or you can send me your comments on Facebook live. So Dr. Lamasa Schrader, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom today. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's talk about recall healing as a modality uh, for finding the root cause of disease. Okay, sure. Uh, In a nutshell, it it focuses, recall healing takes somatic experience, uh, our time before we've even been born into this world, and also our genealogy into consideration. When a person, we say when somebody doesn't give issue to their, their stuff, then it's going to go in the tissues or it can go into the tissues. Um, it's not just an automatic hand down from the, the generations. Like we once thought that heredity meant like, oh, we have this gene and it's going to make us have a breast cancer. Well, that's the, in our understanding, this is not how it actually works. Mm-hmm. And that a person's life experiences contribute to that gene being turned on. And so if a person has a breast cancer, we would look at the nest issues, the things that are going on in the home, the things that are going on with the children, the partner, um, even an animal. And so we look at these things, separation and loss and anger and hurt. These are all issues that if you don't release them, they will stay in the tissues and cause this uh, manifestation. We don't think it's a, we don't think it's a mistake. And so we look to that because many people think, oh, we're going to kill this and we're going to knock it out and we're going to get rid of it. We actually talk about loving it because it's giving us insight and it's helping us to have healthier ways of being in the world. So that's sort of it in a nutshell. I love it. I love it. You know, Dr. Emron Mayer, he was the one, the first one that came on my show. He wrote the mind gut connection. I think that's the name of the book. And Mm -hmm. he, and he said that our, our body and our mind, our gut and our mind are constantly communicating with each other. And the gut knows when the the brain is out of alignment with the gut or the body knows when the mind is out of alignment with, with the body and, uh, or the mind is out of alignment with the body. And so it knows that it needs to deal with something. It just doesn't know what it is because the brain is neglecting it. And so the body will try to get an alignment by saying, okay, I know that there's something that you need to deal with. So, uh, and it's going to be painful. So I'm going to give you pain to be in alignment with the brain. That's how he explained her. Maybe that's how I understood it, but it made so much sense to me. So instead of dealing with whatever you need to deal with, the, the body now is going to send you pain like your back blows out or, you know, you get a diagnosis or the body starts speaking with symptoms. And, um, and so that is the body's attempt to go into alignment with the brain. Is that, is that way off? Am I way off on that one? Well, I think that there's a lot of different theories out there. I absolutely agree that the gut plays a huge role and has all kinds of neuroreceptors and 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 different areas so that's why so many people will feel like they've been punched in the gut when they get 
information. And then also then there's the heart center and it, it sort of all works together because we're a system. Mm -hmm. And so when a person is not addressing the psychological issues, what we say is that we're like a three tiered being. We're psyche, automatic brain and body. And that when we're spinning our wheels about something and we're in this sympathetic overdrive, that the automatic brain is going to say, hey, you are exerting a lot of energy for this particular issue. And yet you have to raise the kids. You have to do all of the things that you do in your reg regular life. And so we need to recuperate some of that energy. So we're going to download it into the body mm -hmm. until a later time when you can really address it. Generally speaking, you won't have symptoms during that time. It's in the after when you've resolved the issue or if it's ongoing, that's when symptoms will actually occur. But when a person goes into a therapist, they'll say, oh, this is my problem. We use the biology. We use the symptoms, just like you're saying. We use the symptoms to say, what is this asking us? What is this telling us? Why is this the best solution for you right now? Hmm. Okay. So with that in mind, you are trained in this modality, this uh, recall healing. So when somebody comes in and says, you know, I have a back problem, for example, I've got herniated discs or I've got cancer. Do you immediately know that there's a correlation between that and a particular trauma that is being stored in the body? So when a person comes in and says something specific, like if they said back, well, I would want to know exactly what part of the back because it is very specific, specific issue, specific diagnosis. Okay. okay. So, so if a person is dealing with a nest conflict, then we can say breast. If, you know, in, in terms of the back, the, the upper back would the, the cervical location oftentimes has to do with intellectuality and, you know, even, putting upon in the middle of the thoracic we talk about i can only count on myself mm -hmm. and i can't i don't feel backed up i don't feel supported and in the lower back is is similar in terms of support i'm the pillar i have to do everything i have a worry for money these these kinds of things are going to inflame the back and so every spinal um cervical location has a specific issue and so we look so that gives me a groundwork to begin to ask the question because every person is different interesting and so once they come in and they tell you okay this is my diagnosis or maybe they're saying you know i'm upset with my husband or my wife and i'm having issues and that's what's causing the problem you're saying well let me look beyond that let me look at because i was i was doing research and it ha you know, what are the parameters? Because I remember someone was, this is when I first started opening myself up to other modalities, other healing modalities that I was told are like witchcraft or quackery or all of that. And when I started opening myself to learning and being curious as opposed to critical, um, I remember laying down on a table and someone was scanning me, and I know this is going to sound weird, with their hands over my body. And when they got to my lung area, my chest area, they asked the question, what happened to your mom when you were, when she was pregnant with you? And I shared what had happened to my mom. And she said, okay, so you have a lung condition. And so I, it's like, she didn't know anything and I'm okay. Well, now she's got my attention. So mm -hmm. how much of that how much of that do you do to get to the root cause? And then now we're really talking about my mom and her relationship with my father or the relationship with somebody else. So typically speaking, I, what I do is I, I start with the here and now mm -hmm. when a person comes in. And so they might come in and, and there's a here and now. I believe absolutely that we have intuitive abilities and that, you know, that the divine guides, when I do work, the, the divine is guiding me to ask the, the right question and get to the root source. Mm -hmm. However, I have a basic understanding about the anatomy and what the specific issue could be. And then we go deeper and we look, we always look at it as, um, an, as an iceberg. 
when a person says, well, I have a lot of stress and it's this, 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 well, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's generally speaking is not what's causing the inside issue. So we look at a person's timeline. It's very specific. The universe is mathematically equated. And so you'll begin to see that in this, there's patterns that if we're 50 when something happens, then we can look at half of our age or we can divide our age and we can find many other things. Typically speaking, we won't get sick on the first time. The second time, it's a series of the same kinds of events that are happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Keep going, keep going. So, so this is how we sort of get to the root. And then we look at what happened before a person was born. For instance, one of the people that I was working with just yesterday, her, she had been punched, her mother had been punched in the stomach by the father while she was, while he, she was pregnant with this, with this young woman. Well, it's sort of set up for her to never have children because she wasn't wanted. And it, and it started a program my father didn't want children and told her later, she's in her 50s now, told her later, I never wanted children. None of his children ever had children. Wow. So it's like when a person has secret suffering, and that's what we say, what is your secret suffering? What is it that is that pebble in your shoe that is hard to deal with, that is scary to deal with, that you want to brush it under the carpet and keep going, keep a stiff upper lip, what can't you talk about? Those are the things that we have to dive in and look at. And then we also look at birth order number. A person, if they're named for somebody, if they're a specific birth order, uh, we look to the generations above. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's very true. Interesting. So <coughs> if you were named after someone else, so, if, uh, so you kind of like take on their issues is that what you're saying i am it's like an invisible oh loyalty okay and and recently i was in uh, poland and i was giving a little workshop and we went through the imagery and the person said oh my gosh when we got to my throat it was so cold so we know that that's a sympathetic overdrive response that that we're in a fight or flight response so i said well who can't you talk to or what is the story? Mm -hmm. she, she's like, oh, she started crying. It was about her son who had been missing for eight months. She didn't know what had happened to him. Mm -hmm. So we did some, we did it as a, as a group. We did the Ho'oponopono, which just simply um, cleanses and, and brings in love and forgiveness and understanding to the situation. Mm -hmm. And she had a flash that her nephew did the same thing at the same age. And so we did some more work. And then we said, I said, you know, then you know for sure that it's a generational pattern. And so then she said, we did a little bit more work. And then she had a flash that her great uncle had died in World War II in the, in, um, and, and they searched for him for eight months, the same as the two boys. And her son was named for this uncle. Oh, wow. No so way. So you yeah. were able, this is like six degrees of separation here. Exactly. Except we are like, it's almost intuitive. We, we don't even know we're doing it. We're naming our children after people. Right. It's an invisible loyalty then that they carry to make up for what had happened from before. So hard to put your arms around it. So is your advice to never name your children after anyone that is in your family? Yes, that is my advice. Absolutely. But what if it's someone like, uh, you know, you're naming someone after a rock star. Do you think that that child is going to honor that rock star because there's no generation there? No, but there's a, the, there's a love within the mom or the dad or both that, ah, that, so my girl, my, one of my best girlfriends named her son um, and, and his middle name is a Led Zeppelin song. And this boy is amazing guitarist. Amazing. <laughs> okay. We're going to continue our conversation. We're going to continue it off of the air on Facebook live, but we're going to continue our conversation with Mich Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader. When we return worldwide at when you need a friend.com call or text your questions, or you can do it on Facebook live 407-373-5959. Oh my gosh, we'll be right here waiting for you. That's amazing. The amazing that you were able to go back. You come as almost like an archaeologist or no, not yeah, an archaeologist or a medical detective. 
Well, it's so funny because there, there was a, a couple of years ago um, in Michigan, a guy was digging and he was uh, looking and he thought he found a, a post for the fence. And instead, it, w- it became a, mo- a woolly mammoth. And, and so I joke around, but this is what happens that when we go digging, we find the woolly mammoths of our ancestry. And once we can give it issue, we can clear it. And that's the most beautiful thing because 80% is just about awareness. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So um, if, okay, I have a question here from Donna. Okay. She says, Dr. Michelle, could you help me with my son breaking his arm, his, the same bone in his left arm? Um, I think it was three times. You have helped cure him of so much. So she said, same bone three times. Oh gosh, when people, let me see. I'm, I'm, three times mother side. Okay, so that is the left side, right? Left side. For, and, and it matters in terms of dominance. So right hand, left hand. So he's right-handed, and uh-huh. this little guy was named for an uncle that had survived Hiroshima and died during the pregnancy. Mama had all kinds of, of, of issues. She had um, been hospitalized for E. coli, and so there was a bunch of things that happened in his young little life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she helped him. The doctors told, him, told her that she was, he was going to die in the hospital oh she my. found the stories told told him about this and then he took a big cleansing breath and he he healed but he has other issues along the way so oh a broken gosh. bone any kind of bone breaking mm-hmm. happens in a repair phase of feeling devalued bones are about feeling devalued and bone? so if somebody breaks a bone it's not okay. necessarily that they fell it's because they feel devalued and the, it causes they, a, a, a sensitivity to the bone? So because they felt devalued. When they feel devalued, the brain sends a message. And this is like a, you know, a severe devaluation. It doesn't just happen, right? And so this devaluation, maybe it's related to mom you know, having an issue with the family. And so a child can take it on for the parent. Maybe it's mom wants to get rid of someone. So if it's this bone, boom, like, let me get rid of them. If it's a wrist, do I feel caught in the middle? It, what is this exactly? Why is this? The, the bone, the breaking of the bone will come at the end of the stress. Okay, so in the, in the beginning, the brain sends a message to micro ulcerate the bone to make sure that there was enough room so that that person can gain value. Okay, so it's only literally what our body has to work with. So, okay, so um, you, you have a situation, you have a situation where the person is feeling this way, but it isn't until they become aware that the, the, the breakage happens or does the breakage happen because they were unaware of the connection. Yes, the, the breakage happens at what the person ne- doesn't necessarily have to be aware. Maybe that's the reason why the breaking is happening three times. Okay, that maybe there's a, it's an in and out of this same kind of devaluation conflict. And so this in and out, and if the person is not aware of this, of why they're breaking their bone, then they might even feel more devalued. Oh my gosh, I broke my bone again. What's wrong with me? Because so these it's are the a cycle. Things. It's a so cycle. This, exactly. These are the things that we say to ourselves. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to stop a little bit because um, this handsome man that has just oh. joined us is Dale Billis of Liberty Health Share. And of course, for those of you who are watching today on Facebook Live, we don't have our private time, Dale, anymore because they're everybody's watching what we're doing live streaming live yes. streaming facebook live or leave her a voice oh man. we're back oh three seven three five nine five nine once again here's lillian and welcome back to the lillian mcdermott radio show where man time just really flies we are this is where a place where you can hear us at world uh, worldwide at when you need a friend.com i'm your host lillian mcdermott and it is my goal that we learn from each other go through life with childlike wonder there's so much we don't know we don't know and that's what we talk about on the show today's topic with dr michelle lamasa schrader is how to unlock 
the root cause of illness through recall healing. Recall healing is a different modality. And she is a PhD who has a lot of tools in her shed. And Dr. Lee Cowden said this at the ACIM conference. He said, you know, when somebody has a hammer as a tool, everything looks like a nail. And it is so important that we have lots of different tools in our healing bucket. because, And this is one of them. This is called uh, recall healing. And I'm excited because this is how we can be self-cleaning ovens. We can learn these tools so that we can heal our lives and need little medical intervention. You know, that's the goal is to be healthy. But if we go through life and ignore all the little traumas or don't even put it all together, uh, then we just allow whatever the doctors, the medical allopathic telling us, take this pill, take this pill, take this pill. In reality, that's why we take responsibility on the show. It doesn't matter what anybody else has done to you. When we heal ourselves from that, it releases it from our body so that our body won't become dis- eased. So this is what we talk about on the show. And I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. You can uh, become a subscriber. Once you subscribe, you'll get messages of who's going to be on the show, what topics are going to be. You also get my 90 day challenge to self-love ebook. And we are also on, while you're there, there's a lot of icons for social media. Check out, become a follow me as well as like me on my social media. That way, when we're on Facebook Live, you get an announcement. So much growing. We're changing the way we promote the show and so that we can come to you as opposed to you finding me wherever it is that you're looking. So um, while you're there, uh, follow me and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as all my social media. If you like podcasts, you can subscribe to the podcast there. And I also want you, while you're on at whenyouneedafriend.com, check out my sponsors, because without my sponsors, we would have no show. Today, we get to speak with Dale Billis of Liberty HealthShare, because they are so like-minded with the show, and I want to encourage you to take back your life, take back your freedom, and take over your health care. And so that's Liberty HealthShare. We're going to talk with Del Billis in a little bit. But right now we are talking to um, Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader. Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader is uh, a, a PhD in psychology, and she also has different techniques and modalities. The one we're talking today is recall healing. And recall healing has to do with um, things that happen that are stored in our body and how we release them. So now, thank you, Michelle, for, for coming on and, and sharing a little bit about that. Oh, did I say that you need to figure out how to support my sponsors? I, there's still so much that's going on. Just make sure you go to whenyouneedafriend.com, check out my sponsors, support my sponsors the way that they are supporting the show. Just want to make sure I say that. Okay, so with that in mind, we talked about names and how we become loyal to the person's life like if you were, I was named after my mom, but my mom's name is spelled differently than mine. Does that matter? It doesn't matter. It's the, it's real imaginary symbolic, but what you can do and anybody who has named, it's not like the end of the world. If you yes. name somebody, you don't What's the know good news here. That. And you're really trying to honor them. However, you can talk to a person's picture, the baby's picture, the children's picture and say, honey, it, what, you know, it wasn't my intention that you, you relive your uncle's life. I released you from that so that you can be the, the person that God intended you to be in your life, just like you. So I released myself from being, you know, uh, needing to, to carry my, my mom's unfinished business in a bigger way. And so you have tools to be able to do that. So let's talk about those tools. How do I know what's happening to me is not me versus my generation? It's both. It's always all of it, okay? So when you work on you, everything else sort of heals, okay? And that's the nice thing is that it just takes you to do the work. That's hard and it takes courage. But on the other side of fear is courage. Mm -hmm. and, and so walking through that fear allows us to have much healthier relationships. 
It allows us to release our children from unfinished business and patterns that were so dysfunctional and, and really hurtful. And so once we can name it and claim, oh my gosh, this is what happened. This is, these are the things. And, and recalling a lot of the, the things that have happened in your own life, it clears it. And, and coming to peace is key. So lots of people say, I will never forgive somebody for, for doing what they did or what they're doing. Well, if you don't forgive, then that unforgiveness will kill you, not them. And so initially I'll tell people, be selfish, okay? And, and you don't have to forgive them, but let's help you to come to peace about it. We're not excusing the behaviors, mm -hmm. but we need to be at peace. Otherwise, that causes our body to be on heightened awareness, turbo function. So, so with that in mind, I, I hear you say they may not want to forgive, but isn't the word forgive and forget the, that terminology had, had, has changed the way we look at forgiveness because forgiveness is not for the other person. Rather, it's for ourselves, Absolutely. right? Yes. So when we look at forgiveness, I always say, you know, it's like, unless you have dementia, you can forget. I mean, who forgets? So you, 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 you remember it, but in a different way, you reformat it. And so I always say forgive and grow. For, forgive, forgiveness is letting go so that you right. can grow. Right. Well, and we say we keep going so we can keep growing. And the other thing about that is that we're not asking you to forget because, Correct. you know, obviously what we want to do is take away the charge from that experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the charge is no longer there, then it's not impacting the body. If you have memories that you think of and you can be, it's as if it happened just yesterday yes. or you're as angry or as hurt as it, as it happened 30 years ago, mm -hmm. that is causing stuff to happen in your body. Like a whole, a whole process is going on to help you deal with that. You're exerting so much energy that your body is going to respond to give you like a turbo function. Okay, really quickly, because I do <laughs> want to bring Del Billis, because I want to know what's happening with open enrollment. <laughs> I really do want to know what's happening with open I, enrollment. I'm a member. <laughs> yeah, you're a member of Liberty Health Show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about how do we release it? How do we release it? Let's be self-cleaning ovens. I'm done. I want to let it go. Right. So coming to peace, but also making the connections of, about the other places in, in our life. So for instance, something happened over the, the weekend that it triggered me. So yesterday I was sort of thinking about it. Why did this trigger me? Well, I'm in a new place. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of friends in this area. Oh my goodness. When I was 10, because I'm 50, well, I'm 51 today, but this started going oh, on. Happy birthday. Well, no, no, and it's not my birthday today, but I mean, oh. I'm 51 now. Anyway, um, but when I was 10 years old, I went to a new school. I, it was like I was in a new land. I oh. didn't have a lot of friends. The girls weren't very nice. It was really hard. So and that, that. that's what was going on. So, so yesterday, when I made the connection, about all these other things, then I could say, oh, even though that happened, I love and accept myself. I forgive myself from the bottom of my heart. I'm always doing the best I can with the resources that I have. And I choose to let this go so that I can live my life to the fullest. Wonderful. <sighs> and then the whole pono pono. I'm so sorry for whatever's in me, whatever I carry that could contribute to this happening over and over again. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Uh, Those are simple tools that work very well. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you so much for that. Hold on that thought because I want to change a little bit of, I want to shift a little bit. Del Billis, the chairman and founder of Liberty Health Share, is a proud sponsor of the Lillian McDermott radio show. And I want to encourage you guys that this is one of the sponsors that I talk about. I'm not just, he's not just this, they're not just a sponsor. I am a member as well as Dr. Michelle Schrader. Welcome, uh, Del, to the Lillian McDermott radio show. What a pleasure to be with you, and, and it's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Schrader. Thank uh, you. Thank you for your uh, participation and engagement with Liberty HealthShare as well. Uh, I, I'm just interpreting what I'm hearing in the conversation. Uh, it, I hear it as decluttering. Yes, absolutely. Uh, eliminating those things in our lives 
that cause confusion and distraction and disorientation and focusing truly on the issue. In fact, I have to tell you, here at our headquarters, uh, Liberty HealthShare, uh, has gone paperless. <laughs> Wow. And so, uh, there's a great decluttering going on. Uh, and I think about that as an analogy for our health care, Lillian. Yes. Uh, Liberty Health Share is a way to declutter, to, to, to really focus on those things that matter. Because health care can be so complex. Uh, in fact, if the maze that we frequently uh, go through with all the intermediaries between ourselves and our doctor and the treatment that we need and the medical service that is so uh, affecting us and our lives. Uh, here's a way for folks to take back, absolutely, control, take charge of and cut through the clutter. Absolutely. That's libertyhealthshare.org. That's 855-58-LIBERTY. And we're going to continue our conversation with Del Billis, Dr. Lamasa uh, Schrader, uh, when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Good job. Good job. Okay. I don't know. Did we make that? Uh, I just got 10 seconds. I didn't get the countdown. So I don't know if we made it out, but hopefully we did. So, doc, uh, so we have Dr. Lamasa Schrader, we have Dale Billis of Liberty Health Share. So I wanted to ask you, Dale, let's, let's really quickly talk about, you know, Liberty Health Share. You know, a lot of people, this is the time of year that people are making decisions. How does that affect us with Liberty Health Share? Because we can join at any time, right? But that's precisely so. Uh, this is the time of the year, traditionally, we've been kind of led to do that through the Affordable Care Act. Uh, this open enrollment period, uh, and it is the ACA's mechanism, frankly, for dealing with pre-existing conditions, because you can't buy insurance uh, any time throughout the course of the year. Uh, you can only enroll with traditional health care insurance mm -hmm. during this open enrollment period. Uh, but that's not, uh, in, uh, that doesn't affect us, obviously, uh, we welcome folks to come join us during this time of the year. It's when people are making choices and decisions for the year to come. Uh, but folks can join us every month throughout the course of, uh, of the year. Uh, and so uh, we're not, although we're not subject to the open enrollment period, we certainly welcome folks to come join us during this time. You know, Dale, as I was preparing for the show last night and, and you know, I, I knew that every time you come on and we're having these conversations, I love how open you are, which is so, um, you know, it's so telling for Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare has embraced holistic living as well. And you support that for people who want to go and experience that as well as allopathic. Um, but I was thinking, you know, because of this uh, time, we're looking at, um, you know, the, the, the previous, like, pre-existing conditions. And that's why most people share, shift, shift at this time. I would love for when we get back on the air, and of course, Andre, like, make sure you let me know when we're going back, what Liberty Health Share does with pre-existing conditions. Love to address. What, at what point does it stop being a pre-existing condition? Because right. if I had, you know, in, in the insurance world, uh, as a child, if I had asthma as a child, if, you know, God forbid, I would get better because I still have to claim it in my insurance. How much right. time can elapse when you say, okay, we're done with that. Can we move on? So I want to talk about that when we go back on the air. Happy to do it. Perfect. Is that a good question? That's an excellent question. <laughs> because there's so many of us. You know, that's what people are worried about. That sure. you know, the pre-existing condition stuff, and right. uh, and and they've made a, such a great deal about it. So we're gonna. Um, how much time do we have, Andre? Oh, 30 seconds. So that means we should be coming on soon. So thank you so much for those of you who are on Facebook Live. I am so excited. You guys get to meet Dale Phyllis too. So make sure you call for us, uh, libertyhealthshare.org. That's 855-58-LIBERTY. Or leave her a message. 855-585-4237-3-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we learn and grow together. Today's topic has been about um, recall healing, bringing out some of the things that you don't even know are stored in your body and allowing yourself to release it. And in doing so, you release 
the root cause of the disease, which allows you to get better. So then, because it's all about making informed choices, we have Liberty HealthShare, a proud sponsor of the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. And I want to encourage you guys to go to libertyhealthshare.org to learn more because we're going to talk about open enrollment with Dale Billis and or you can call 855 855- Five eight Liberty. So while we're off the air, Dale, I talked. I, I asked you a question about open enrollment, and you know, with a, I had shared an example that as a child I had asthma, uh, and I had asthma as a, you know a young adult and as an adult. But when I changed my lifestyle, that went away. But if I were to say I don't have asthma, the insurance world would just crucify me. But with Liberty Health Share, how much time can you lap when you say, okay, well, they took care of it? Does that happen with Liberty Health Share? Sure. Uh, and and we, we've been sensitized, obviously, from the Affordable Care Act particularly, mm-hmm. to these issues relative to pre-existing conditions. Uh, and, and it's an excellent topic for us to address. Here's how we define he- uh, a pre-existing. Uh, any condition within the last 36 months with, with symptoms, uh, treatment, or medication. So th- if it was prior to three years ago, it's not considered pre-existing for us. Uh, we've had folks say, oh, I had a hip replacement five years ago. Don't have any symptoms. I'm, I'm, I'm functioning, operating fine. Uh, is that pre-existing? No, it's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so within the la- a look back of three years, symptoms, medication, treatment is considered a pre-existing. That's number one. Number two, we deal with pre-existing conditions in a couple of different ways. Uh, The first is those who come and join us, and they can join any month in the course of the year, uh, unlike the Affordable Care Act uh, programs where you can only enroll during open enrollment. Mm -hmm. You can join us any month in the course of the year. We're not subject to that open enrollment period. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, And so in the first year of participation, we don't uh, share or pre- the costs of pre-existing conditions are not eligible for sharing in the first year. Mm-hmm. The second year and following, following, we pick up on it and phase it in over the next two years. For so, for two years, two and three, we would we would be eligible to share up to fifty thousand for that particular condition alone. Anything else that occurs is unrelated with these rules. Uh, but and then third year and following, uh, it's no longer pre-existing. Very good. But the second way we deal with pre-existing, I think, is the most impactful uh, because we have in our nation today, Lillian, uh, I, I, a wave. It's an epidemic of chronic health conditions, high blood pressure, a heart disease, type two diabetes, certainly obesity smoking, cholesterol, all of those are subject to a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. The way I eat, the way I sleep, uh, exercise and live, it it impacts those conditions. So we welcome folks uh, with those particular lifestyle-based conditions we share in their pre-existing costs. So long as they enroll with a program we call Health Track. Uh, health track is we assign a health coach and the health coach uh, provides positive encouragement and support and accountability. And I'm sure the doctor would uh, acknowledge <laughs> that that's one of the key elements of change in a person's life. Uh, and so uh, uh, we, as with the help of the health coach, they, they set their own predetermined customized treatment plan and goals, work towards those objectives of lifestyle change and impact on their condition, graduate from the program. We send up digital balloons for them uh, in our monthly newsletter. uh, And we're seeing lives transform, frankly, as a result. Absolutely. And for those of you who are listening and you're going, this isn't, this is too good to be true. It's not. It really is real. I've been a member for over two years and it was very scary for me to walk away from what I knew was real, which was insurance. And I walked away from it and I embraced a health share program, Liberty Health Share, not a, just any Liberty Health Share, because I knew they also embraced my lifestyle, which is more of holistic and uh, functional integrative. And so with insurance, 
insurance, I was paying all these high deductibles and co-payments and all of that. And I wasn't even able to go to the doctors I really wanted to go to. So Dale Billis, you really hit it off the, like a, a home run. This is a really good thing. Well, it, it really is focused on the care of our health. Now, frankly, that arises out of our shared values and beliefs mm -hmm. that we're creatures of God and we have a moral and spiritual obligation to care for this temple uh, that we have been given. Uh, and so we're health conscious, we're health focused. Now, like you just said, uh, Lily, we're not all healthy, we're on the path yeah. we're on, or on the road, but we're health aware. And that makes such a significant difference. Healthy, health conscious people have fewer bills, go to the hospital less, recover more quickly, uh, and so costs tend to be uh, certainly less. And we see that we're sharing medical bills together as a group at about 50% of the cost of traditional health care because we're paying each other's bills and we have a buy-in for those costs associated with health care. Absolutely. And so I wanted to ask Dr. Michelle Schrader, I mean, I didn't even know that you were a member of Liberty Health Share. Share a little bit of what's been your experience. So I'm very new. I just joined in July, which is wonderful because it was, you know, in the middle of the year and I could, could join. And, uh, but it's been great because I see some docs in Florida and I have some alternative docs. And so I just started using it, but I'm super excited. And I have many clients that have Liberty and it's wonderful, you know, so I'm very, um, I'm very excited to be here with you, Dale. Wonderful. Well, wonderful. wonderful. It is a thrill to have you. God bless you. Thank uh, you. Welcome you. You too. So doctor, uh, so, so as you're listening to my conversation with Dr. Lamasa Schrader about the mind, body, spirit connection, uh, Liberty HealthShare embraces that if somebody was with Liberty HealthShare and they needed um, to, to go to a person that um, had different tools in their toolbox when it came to uh, mental health and feeling healthy, how would uh, uh, Liberty HealthShare handle something like that? Well, we certainly embrace naturopathic treatments, encouragement to our members to utilize uh, naturopaths. Uh, we do not, I would say, share in talk therapy expense, mm -hmm. uh, but we do share in psychiatric assistance uh, if that's needed. Very good, very good. And so for, you know, every, and, and so with, with Liberty Health Share, you know, people think that they, when they go into that, they're going to do with less. Share some of the benefits of Liberty Health Share, Dale, when it comes to um, some of the privileges like Affordable Care Act exempt, a, a million dollars per incident. Yeah, that, that is really the way we've constructed on the basis of an input <laughs> from our members because mm -hmm. our members vote on different aspects uh, of the, our program. Uh, the, the fact that, it's, that we include naturopathic is a result of the members' decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, we share up to a million dollars for every incident that occurs. We have a personal responsibility. We call it an annual unshared amount mm -hmm. uh, that we pay out of our pockets. But if you were a family, for instance, uh, you, you'd be responsible for the first $2,250 uh, uh, out of pocket uh, and then the balance up to a million dollars for any incident that occurs with no limit on the number of incidents. Uh, and so that's proven to be more than adequate for well, the need of our members. That's wonderful. And you guys have done a great job. I, I absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much for being a sponsor of the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Um, and so for those of you who would like to learn this new truth of Liberty Health Share and uh, make an informed choice and ex exercise your freedom, that's 855-58-LIBERTY or 855-585-4237 or you can go to libertyhealthshare.org. Thank you so much, Del Billis, for being on the oh, show. What a pleasure. God bless. Thanks for the opportunity to be here, Lillian. Thank you. And Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader, I want to continue the conversation a little bit off the air. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom today on the radio. And for those of you, my listening friend, what are you going to do with this information? What are you going to do? It is time to take your health and your life back and start healing from the inside out. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. 
Make it the best day, best day ever. 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 Love. This, is, this is like a perfect combination here. Yeah, you guys are really, really good. Thank you so much, Dale. I'm so excited that we were able to talk about um, open enrollment yes. and the fact that it's open enrollment every day. Every day. Health share. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Dr. Like, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too as well. And I'm, I'm grateful for what you have done for, for yeah, this. That's a thrill to hear and uh, many blessings on you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dale. So I know much. you're off it because you have so many I different do. things that you're yeah. doing, but <laughs> thank you so much for being here today and sharing how wonderful Liberty Health Share is. So thank, thank you. you once again. Okay, take care. Okay, Dr. Michelle Lamasa. So we have um, a few minutes before we close this um, this session on Liberty Health on Liberty Health Share on Facebook <laughs> Live, and I'm so grateful for those of you who have been watching today. Um, so, is there any tips that you can give, especially during the holidays, as many people? Um, don't know why they're depressed, don't know why they're anxious, don't know why they just can't get into the holiday spirit, what would you say to them to maybe start the healing process? Breathe. 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 <laughs> yes. That's Breathing a is always one. a very good uh, place to start. And, and especially uh, when, you, when you stop and you, and you center and you let your tummy muscles expand and you just breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. That starts the, the serotonin process of, of allowing us to feel better and, and allowing us to feel more connected. And then I would say, you know, what, what was traumatic? What was traumatic for, for your family at Christmas time? And, you know, I mean, it brings up a lot of different things and, and a lot of disconnect also. And so I often hear that, that, that people don't get along in their families. And, you know, I find myself saying a prophet often doesn't speak to his own land. Oh my gosh. And so, so take a step back, understand it's not really about you. You're being triggered and it's an invitation for you to do your work. And in the end, it will, uh, it will help to heal you and your family. Very good. And so, um, with that, uh, how do you, how can people, for those of you who would like to learn a little bit more about um, Dr. Lamasa Schrader, her website, and I, I'm sorry I didn't say it during while we were in the air, but people will be able to see this uh, later on over and over. You can go to soultreetransformations.com. That's soultreetransformations.com. So share a little bit about, um, you know, this, this, um, the connection and how we can start releasing. Once we become aware that, ah, the reason why I'm depressed during the holidays isn't so much that my vitamin D levels might be low, but also there was trauma in the home. There was always arguing and we were still, our body is still relieving, reliving that. How can we release it? Well, and also a depression uh, talks about in the ancestors above that somebody died of a heart attack. And when we're depressed, it shuts us down and we don't do anything. So we don't lose our territory and die of a heart attack. So these are really important connections to make mm -hmm. that it's that if there's somebody that has died of a myocardial infarct from above, it can produce a doctor in the next generation. It can produce depression in the next generation where, where we're neither male or female. We just are sort of there and, and that saves our lives. And so it's always the best solution that, we're, that our body responds to. So I would say that's really important to understand. And then what Carl Jung said is if it's not in our awareness, it can return as a destiny. And then more recently, I, I was listening and one of my friends shared with me a, a saying that um, Thomas Aquinas had said that he, he said, if it's not revealed, it can't be healed. Mm. And so we're as sick as our secrets are. And so just by putting it out there and becoming more aware, many more things will come to, into the awareness. People tell me all the time, I don't remember, I don't remember. It's okay. We work on the here and now. We're removing the clutter. More will come to the surface. Breathing, loving ourselves, forgiving ourselves. 80% is the awareness. 20% is what you do with the awareness. 
So breathe. And you know what? And 20% is not as huge as having to deal with 100%. You know, so if I figured out that my connection to depression or my connection to anxiety or my connection to prostate issues or sexual dysfunction or um, lack of arousal or not being able, because I was reading some of this stuff that you were able to hone in on people that that have like uh, sexual impotence or a woman in a, a... a man, sexual impotence, a woman, lack of being able to have an orgasm, to what? Uh, well, trauma, for one. But for, I can give you a, a, a quick little example. One of the people that I worked with had the name. He had six brothers. They all had the same name. What? And, was and that George Foreman? George <laughs> one, George two, then, George three, George four? And then their middle name was some, something different. And so they got called that. And so I said, who is this guy? Because he came in because he had erectile dysfunction. And he said, oh, I think it's my grandpa on my mom's side, sort of like just flippantly. I said, well, what kind of guy is he? Well, he had another family and he was never with my, my, my mom. So in Mexico, he had two families, one that had all girls, one that had all boys. And the mother was very hurt by this and that her father was gone all the time. So she marries a guy that gives her six boys and to honor her dad and to say, hey, I exist. I'm going to have all these boys and name them after you. Well, what is the best solution to not have another baby is to not be able to keep your erection. (laughs) Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. What a connection. Oh my God. Let's leave it all in. (laughs) Okay. And so once he made that connection, he got red in the face. He had a big headache that day. No more erectile dysfunction. It was one time that, you know, is awesome. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Okay. So I am sure that there are people watching today that would love to learn how to work with you. Can they work with you via Skype? Can they work, do they have to go to, do you, you live in Texas, right? I live in Texas and uh, we can do Skype, phone, FaceTime, Zoom. Um, also, I do, uh, I do a lot of workshops around the country and around the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we, they, can, they can look me up on my website. My phone number uh, is 626-494-3333, and they can get in touch with me that way. And Recall Healing USA is, our, is my other website that gives a list of the, the workshops, and um, I think it actually needs to be updated, but it is coming. And, um, and so I'm giving a workshop on weight in Louisiana in January. So it's, uh, it would be great you know, to have people. So real quick, so um, you you talked about your your website and are you going to? You also mentioned today on the show that you um, have a tie to Florida. You know, I am in Florida. Do you ever come over here? That maybe we could create a workshop. Absolutely, I'll be in Florida at the end of January as well, and I'm giving a workshop then. So where where are you going to be? At, at Docs Outside the Box. I'm there every three months actually. Where? And they're in St. Pete in St. Petersburg. And uh, it's called Docs Outside the Box and they're amazing women and that's wonderful connection. And so I'm on their team. And so we, we give workshops every three months and, and um, they often refer to me as well. Ooh, that's really nice. And so are you going to, is it a particular theme? Are you going to work on whatever people are there needing? This time it's on mind, body skills. And so we're going to do a lot of- Mind, body, what? Skills. The, Mind, body skills. Okay. Yes. So going into different things, and this is really what my PhD was based on. And the way I look at it is that recall healing is it's like an avocado. The seed is recall healing. It gives me my foundation and it's amazing. And then all the things I learned in my PhD and the other modalities, they help to support a person. And so I'm going to teach some of those tools um, in in January. At Docs Very good. Okay. So let's stay connected so that we can maybe uh, do another show so that people know they that. can go to St. Pete. That's in our backyard and it's uh-huh. beautiful over there. Okay. So before we go, I would like for you to um, share, you did a little um, 
you know, it, it wasn't tapping. It was, you know, kind of like self-talk, self-love talk. Mm -hmm. And it was recall. tapping too. It's like, it's a combination. You were tapping too? I was tapping. I, call, right. we call I didn't it notice the, that tapping. It's called the butterfly hug. A and butterfly hug? A butterfly hug. Okay, and so what are the tapping. things? Okay, so let's talk about the butterfly hug and what that does to us. Okay, so whenever we tap or we touch our body and we say certain things, we anchor it into our body. Mm. Okay, so when I was eliminating weight, I stopped looking in the, in the mirror and telling myself that I was a fat pig. And I started touching my, my belly and saying, oh, thank you so much for keeping me afloat and alive. I love you so much. It's, it's what you did to help save my life. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, there might be something that happens in our day. Even though this happened, I love and accept myself. Even though this I, happened, I love and accept myself. I forgive myself from the bottom of my heart because I'm doing the best I can with the resources that I have. I forgive myself <clears throat> from the bottom of my heart because I'm doing the best I can with the resources that I have. Did I say uh -huh. that correctly? Yes, you did. And I no longer have to carry this in my body. I don't have to be ill for this. I don't have to die for this. I'm just releasing it. Exactly. It's not I choose, even in my body. I'm just releasing it. I choose to let this go so that I can live my life to the fullest. And if you choose, for the glory of God. <sighs> With that in mind, for those of you who are watching, please share this video. Please like us, follow us, and let's help the show grow so the more of these Dr. Michelle Shr uh, Lamasa Schraders are out there, we're learning this new truth that our bodies can heal. We can heal. We're not victims of our DNA, but through our choices. What we inherit, you know, this is what I used to say. What we inherit are the family recipes. But now I'm hearing that we need to become aware of the generational patterns that we Absolutely. are loyal to yes that we need to become a shifter a generational pattern shifter so that we can say i love you over there but i do not want to live your life i'm going to live my life right and i'm separated from you i get to live my own life and and so it isn't a death sentence it's not you know we are once we're bringing these things into the awareness we can release these patterns and our children can live healthier lives. And we can choose. We can choose mm -hmm. the life that we want. So if someone is dealing with depression and they've dealt with depression their whole life, how do they release that? Because it's scary to release, not, you know, there is a certain, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not going to just pick on depression, any disease. <clears throat> like people identify with their disease. Like I, you know, it's like, uh, how are you? I've got this. Or how, what's going on? Oh, let me tell you about all my diseases. And mm -hmm. we focus on what's wrong in our body when our body is trying to speak to us and saying, mm -hmm. this is the reason why I'm like not doing the best I can because you're not, you're not acknowledging what this means in my body. So mm -hmm. what do you say to someone who is tied and committed to their being their disease? So, so, so often when we get a diagnosis, then that becomes the focus. Correct. The focus, the focus, the focus, the cancer, this, that, oh, I got this. So for one, with depression and with anything, we have to talk about what is your purpose in life mm -hmm. and, and help that person to access joy, direction, create some goals. You know, it's what we do in health coaching, right? To, mm -hmm. to yeah. get that person out. But when a person has a secondary gain to stay sick, they get disability for staying sick. It's not in, in, for them. It's not in their best interest to heal of that. So it's a really bad deal when you start getting paid to be sick and to be off work. I had one client, um, she was a woman, she was a far farmer's wife, and for all her whole life, she took care of her family, and now the grandkids were coming, and, and she, got a, she had a breast cancer. And I said, so what's gonna happen when you're all done with that breast cancer? And I said, because she said, it's so nice, my kids take care of me, my husband does all of this stuff. So when I asked her that, she, she, she didn't know what to do. She couldn't speak her truth. 
She died two months later. Oh. So sometimes, and, and in this work, what I've found is that sometimes it is somebody's solution to die. And we have to allow that to happen. And yet to help a person to have direction, to have meaning, to access their, their purpose and meaning in life, that is what I love to do. That is, and then the side effect is that the symptoms go away. Okay. Well, okay. To be so continued. I hope that was, yeah. yeah I, hope that very, was I am, I am, I, I, I could go into another show with you, but I am going to stop right now and say thank you so much for being on the show. I want to again encourage you, for those of you who stayed the whole entire broadcast on Facebook Live, I want to thank you for also staying on and, thank like you. I said, help us, help us grow the show, share this broadcast, and, and like us and follow us and all of that. Thank you so much, Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader. You can find her again at SoulTreeTransformations.com. And of course, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And go to whenyouneedafriend.com and subscribe there too so that you know who is going to be on my show and what their credentials are and how you can connect to them. Because if you do, then that's you'd already have all this information. So thank you so much. And I look forward to our next conversation. So right now I am going to stop the uh, live stream and now you. stop the recording. So.